Back inside the steam room with our first show of 2022. Oh, this is big today, Ernest. Yes, this is big because, and this, one of my favorites, this is, this is going to be, you know, I, I told Michael Kaplan, our producer, because he's always saying, who would you guys like to have on the show? And I said, you know who I really want? Because I'm, you know, I got this addiction to the Peloton. I know you do. And, and I was like, it would be great if we could get the face of Peloton, Alex Toussaint, on the show. And look what Cap, Cap makes it happen. And hey. AT joins us in the steam room. Man, it, this, this is such a pleasure because you have influenced and encouraged, I'm thinking, millions of folks by your workouts on that bike, man, on the Peloton. And I'm one of them. And, um, and so thank you for being here, man. This is, this is really a pleasure. No, thank you for the opportunity, Ernie. And I thank you, Charles, as well. I grew up watching you guys my entire childhood with my father. I studied basketball. Um, so to sit here in front of the presence of two greats uh, is, a, is a blessing. It makes me feel like I'm doing something right. <laughs> so I remember the first time I became somebody. It was a shock to your system. And obviously, you've been in it a long time now. Have you shocked at your popularity? Every single day. Every single day. I'm a regular individual. I still got to take my hat off when I kiss my mom on the cheek when I walk in the house. So to walk outside and see people come up to me randomly and say that you've inspired me, you've helped me become a better person, a better individual. Um, it's definitely a self-validating uh, moment in my life right now. Just to, after everything I've overcome, all the adversity, all the negativity that I've lived through, to be on the opposite side now and to have this moment to just inspire people and to spread this love. Charles, it is a blessing. And there's no day that I wake up that I'm ever used to it because it just, it, there's never two days out of the same. There's never two days out of the same. So I'm still trying to get adjusted to it, but I definitely take this opportunity and, de uh, and definitely appreciate the love and the support from everybody out there. Well, Alex, let's get into that a little bit how, about how, how this all came to be, because I know you've been with Peloton since, what, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. Uh, but, yes, the, but the road to get there, you know, I, I know it includes uh, as – I guess a troubled, as they say, childhood, but, you know, and a time in a, mm -hmm. at a military school and that kind of thing. But take us through that and how it went from there to this. Yeah, I, so I was fortunate enough to have two wonderful parents, Haitian immigrants that came to this country, sacrificed everything in their power to make sure that my brothers um, and myself were just put in a position to succeed. I was that young kid that never understood those sacrifices and took those all for granted. So I've been kicked out of every school I've ever, I've ever been to. Um, I didn't really have a great relationship with my father growing up. The love was there, but he was just so tough on me that it just put me in a dark space that I wasn't able to really live up to the family last name. Um, so I went to military school in sixth grade just to gain some kind of discipline structure to make sure that my I didn't end up a statistic. My dad was like, the course, the way you're, the way the course of your life is going right now, I don't want to see you dead or in jail. So the best op the best option was to send me to military school to help me get a, a strong foundation as a young man, help me get some purpose and direction in life. That way I was put in a position to succeed. So I got to give all the credit to my father and my mother for pushing me to such a level of greatness that I wouldn't be able to get there without, without their support. Um, I went to audio and video production school in Rhode Island, and then my car was stolen out there, and then my, just depression kicked in, living up to the family last name and not being able to, not living up to the family last name kind of just threw me into a downward spiral. Um, I started mopping floors at a company called Flywheel Sports, where at the same time I, I asked the owner, Ruth Zuckerman, for an opportunity to start teaching. And she looked at me and said, if you give me two weeks of your time, we could change your life. We fast forward nine years later, and I'm at Peloton living out my dream, getting to be myself every single day and inspiring millions of people. So in the words of Biggie Smalls, um, I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive, and it's all good, baby. Wait, who gave you that opportunity? Uh, a lady by the name of Ruth Zuckerman, one of my life mentors. So she told you to give me two weeks, and, and the rest is history? Yes, sir. And I say that because um, I say this a lot in my class. Every day is an audition to be great. She saw me mopping those floors with a certain purpose and a certain direction that if she gave me another opportunity, what could I do with it? So it every day that I came to work mopping floors was the audition for me to even have the opportunity to get onto the cycling bike. Because hundreds of people have always come up to her and asked for an opportunity. But how many people have taken that opportunity and really run with it and take that to a serious level in life? Well, how did it go? How did it go from there to Peloton? How, I mean, they call you, or are you talking to the Peloton folks, or, or how did that all happen? It was a recruitment process. This was early on, this is 2014, heading into 15. Um, I had an opportunity to meet John Foley, uh, the CEO of our company right now, one of the one of the most inspirational people in my life. 
Um, and he said, your talents need to be broadcasted worldwide. What you're doing right now inside of a room in, in front of 50 people is great, but let's get you in front of millions of people. And at the time, I'm like, that doesn't, that sounds crazy. People aren't riding in their house. People aren't going to be taking classes like that. But we fast forward years later. Um, it all goes down to people seeing a light in you that you don't see into yourself. That's really what my life has always been about. I've had a lot of instrument, um, instrumental people that have really made sure that uh, they put that extra battery into my back to push me to another level of greatness. And Ruth Zuckerman, John Foley, these are individuals that really took a, a, a liking in me and just gave me an opportunity that I never took for granted. And here we are. To me, I think it's all right to make mistakes when you're young because we don't know anything. But I got to give you credit for just keep battling because I think that so many kids, uh, like for me, I started stealing when I was a young kid. And and I remember getting chased by the police one night. And I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. But I was so lucky I didn't cross that bridge where you can't come back. So I I think your story is inspirational because – we're supposed to be young, dumb, and stupid. I, I think that's that quote uh, for a reason. But I, you met so many inspirational people, but I'm intrigued by your dad because, be, uh, number one, uh, when you have a, a, a strong, dominant parent, and I try to actually be that because I think too many parents want to be friends with their kids. I think that's one of the big. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the biggest problems. But I think me and my daughter. I have one kid. I think she really thought I was crazy when she was young, and I think mm-hmm. now she's getting ready to become a mother. I said, "Hey, our job ain't to be your friend. Our job is to get you ready for the real world." And it seems like yes, sir. you talk about the young, the, the the lady who helped you. You talk about the CEO of your company, but. Man, having a father like that, I think you probably appreciate it more, obviously, now than you did at the time. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And that's what I, that's what I was saying before. My Understanding my dad's sacrifices, my mom and dad's sacrifices as an older individual versus as a uh, young teen or like an adolescent, not understanding that at a young age and taking that for granted and now seeing the opposite side of it. Every day that I get on that bike, every day that I wake up, I'm able to represent my family last name and represent my parents. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to validate all, everything that my parents have ever done. Every sacrifice, every opportunity, everything that I've ever failed them at. I'm trying to just validate that in real time because we understand that like a lot of young black men and a lot of young black individuals aren't, don't have both parents in their lives. And I'm fortunate enough to have two, both, two of my parents who cared about me, who made sure that I was protected, who made sure that they push you to another level. Um, and as a kid, yeah, like that was stressful. We got into fights all the time, but I look back now and I call my dad randomly and I just say, thank you. Thank you, because there's so many things that I go through every single day that it was, uh, there was a lesson from my childhood that my dad put me through. You know, uh, when you talk like that, there, there, there's a guy named Herm Edwards who I really admire and respect. Played in the NFL, coached in the NFL for a long time. Now he's coaching at Arizona State. And people have always asked Herm to speak to their young men. I would trust Herm with any young men in the world. But you said something that he talks about. He says, that last name on your jersey, it ain't your name. It's your family's yes, name. So expand upon that a little bit, please. Well, just understanding that um, I come from the uh, from two Haitian immigrants and understanding that I was one sacrifice away from growing up in Haiti compared to growing up in New York where I had more advantages than I possibly would in my entire life. When you understand that as a, as a young kid heading into an old uh, young adult, it shifts your perspective and your mindset. Because as a young kid, you're always thinking about your first name. What can I do for myself? What can I do for my name? What can can people remember me as? But as I get older, I'm thinking about the last name, the ones that sacrificed that came before me, the ones that are gonna come here while I'm in this time time period, and also the ones that are gonna come after. It's all about the legacy. And I want people to remember our last name for something powerful on this planet. It's never been about the first name. It's always gotta be about your last name and, and the people that come before you and after you. So I try to use that as my daily motivation. And that helps me keep keep my back against that wall of. We don't have the opportunity to get comfortable. I don't have the opportunity to get tired. I don't have the opportunity not to sacrifice and, and push my name to another level. Because my parents can come to this country without knowing the English language, not having the, English, uh, the education, and be able to thrive in this country. It's my duty to at least put my the next generation in a position to succeed and thrive as well. Alex, let's talk about the bike. Let's talk about being in the saddle. Let's talk about somebody who gets on there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 
for an Alex Toussaint workout. Number one, I, I love the way you use that platform. Aside, you know, it's not just, okay, uh, we're going to do this now for the next 25 seconds or this. and now It's you, you share your life, basically. I mean, not in great detail, but the qualities that, that have gotten you here. How did you come upon that style of teaching uh, all these millions of folks like me who run that bike? I would go back to the credit of Ruth Zuckerman when I first got into a cycling bike. She said, anybody can teach you a sold out room when it's sold out. Can you teach you an empty room when it's not sold out? And having that perspective and that mindset of getting up there, just being able to express yourself and be you is a powerful thing. And for the community to be receptive of the messages that I'm, that I'm providing is also a powerful thing. So I just give my hats off to Peloton and the people that gave me inspiration throughout the way because I'm, I get to just go to work every single day and be myself ready. I'm still just going through the, the trials and the tribulations. I'm still dealing with childhood trauma that every single pedal stroke I take is an opportunity to carve away at that, to really shape out who I want to be in the future. This is just me being myself. And I'm just so happy that it, it allows me to inspire people. Are there ever days, though, where it's tough to do that? I mean, we all have days where we go to work and maybe are, are not 100%. Or maybe something, we're saying something's going on. At yeah, home. something's going on. But man, every yeah, time man. I'm on there and I see you, it's like, dude, this guy's more energetic than he was last time, and he's kicking my ass harder than he did the day before. <laughs> Ernie, to keep it real with you, I go through those days all the time. But there's a beautiful thing that my job, quote unquote, which is my passion, is also my form of therapy. My my ability to express myself at work is a blessing itself. So if I'm going through a bad day. The minute I get onto the bike, that's my happy place. That's my comfort zone. That's my that's my empty gym uh, basket right in front of me. Nobody's guarding me. And I can get shots up. That's my that's my open setting right there. So if you've been in the live in the live show before pre show, you see me say a prayer before class, kiss my shoes, and give thanks. Those are just the key elements that keep me locked in uh, into the ride that we're about to go through. But the minute that red light goes on, I just I get I find that grace and that gratitude of being able to go to work and be myself and get just have fun and inspire people. There's, it's a blessing. So, so Alex, like I've lost about 45 pounds. I got about 45 more to go because I gained about 92 pounds when I got new hips. So now okay. I'm starting to feel like a human being again. So obviously cardio is a really, really important part of this master plan. Give older guys like myself, I'm almost 60, what is what advice eating wise would you give me to help me keep going losing weight? I don't think we want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, it's one of those things you gotta know your body and know what makes you feel good. I'm the first I'm very much of a believer of I'm a free spirit eater. I eat whatever I want, but at a level of discipline wise. So like freedom within the discipline, right? You just gotta know your body and know what works best. So if I was you personally, I would just try to make sure I put healthy, fresh fresh foods into my into your system, whether it be vegetables, fruits. Um, stay away from too much carbs, things that like the heavy fats, the fried chickens and things like that, that we all love on a good Sunday. Yeah. It all comes just back down to the discipline. Have your freedom, enjoy your life. Like you got one life to live, enjoy it. Eat what you want to eat, but also have that discipline to know when to pull back, when to take your body to that level of like, all right, I've been eating crazy. Let me scale back just a tad bit. So I never want to tell somebody what to put into their body because your body is your temple and you know it better than anyone else. I just would say find the freedom within the discipline and what makes you feel good. AT, this guy has got a Peloton bike. And he won't ride it, okay? So Wait, why not? <laughs> that, that's why I want, I want what, you to what, I want what, you to oh, convince oh, him because I, I've I, been on the thing for a year now, and it's been a I, life I changer told you for me. I had to get some of the weight off of me because it, that bike will still support you. I, I know, but I wanted to be able to, to actually ride a bike and actually do something. As like Kenny says, you can't ride a bike on one and think you're doing something. You know, Kenny, he, won't, he won't let you ride it on one. Yeah, I, no, uh, listen, I'm excited. Uh, I, I'm really excited about my Peloton. I'm not going to lie because, Ernie, I, and, and Alex, this is what's amazing about you. Like, first of all, I got all the girls at work got Pelotons and they brag about you. <laughs> but I got a seven year old, but no, seriously. I, but I got a seven year old white guy who brags about you all the time. And I'm like, 65, man. That's 70. You round I'm up. I'm 65. You, you round up, Ernie. <laughs> no, but but it's just so funny. Like, it's it's uh, all the girls like looking at you and got a crush on you and everything. But then in the last year, Ernie's talking about, yeah, I took Alex's class today. I'm like, your, your spectrum of inspiring people. 
it's exactly what you're trying to do. You're all over the place trying to inspire places. It's pretty cool. Yes, sir. I got to give credit to my environment where I was brought up in between the East Hampton aspect of Long Island where I was raised as well as a military school and then as well as being put into uh, a corporate space at a young age. All those different pillars uh, helped me communicate with the different types of communities and different backgrounds. So it's a blessing to be able to have that wide spectrum. Obviously, I, I don't take that for granted. And just to be able to be myself while doing it, it's, it's a powerful thing. As you guys know, you get to go to work every single day. You love your jobs. And you guys are very much yourselves every single day to the point that you love what you do. I'm just doing that and I'm riding a bike. That's that's all it is. And the word and the word and the word that you said there, it's get to. You get to get do to. this. Yes, yeah, that's one of Ernie, that's one yes, of Ernie's favorite sayings. It is, man. It's it's a get to, not a got to, yeah. man. And hey, it's and like, that's it makes all the difference. I got a question. When's the last day you've never been on a the, the last day you haven't been on a bike? Oh, I just came off of a week vacation. Trust me, I definitely take my recovery. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, trust me. <laughs> Charles, I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm not teaching, I am not on that bike. My bike at home has a little bit of dust on it. Don't tell nobody, but I, if, I'm, if I'm not teaching, I'm not on that bike. I got to get my body that proper recovery as much as possible. How, how difficult is it or how different is it from the days when you're doing live classes where you had, you know, you have folks in there and you're, you know, you're making eye contact with folks and now it's all on a screen. And do you miss those? Do you miss those days when you have folks in the studio with you? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. You obviously appreciate the in-studio uh, energy that the members provide, um, but we just want to make sure every, all of our members stay safe right now. So being able to shift to that, um, to the just teaching in studio and having our members at home, making sure everybody's safe while still providing that level of discipline, structure, and love for our members. It's it, I, I don't want to I don't want to um, I don't want to make sure everybody stays safe at all times. So obviously, I miss that, and I wish we could have the members back, and hopefully, we will soon. But for right now, we just want to make sure that everybody stays safe. So, hey, I was reading the GQ profile on you, and uh, and so I I want you to I'm going to make you uncomfortable here. Um, oh, okay, you're looking into that screen here, and pretend that that is your mirror in the morning. So, show us what you do in front of the mirror every morning. All right. So if I'm looking right into the mirror right now, I'm gonna close my eyes take a second just to give thanks that my feet touch the ground, my eyes opened up and I get to move my body, move my mind. But before we do anything else, I just want to give myself an inhale of confidence. Ah, let's get it, baby. And that's, that's that third one that just lets out all that negative energy <laughs> to release all that toxins. It's time to go be great. We're afforded another 24 hours and I'm, now I'm locked in. That's the three things I need to get going every single morning. And, and, that, and then you begin to validate your greatness. Uh, yet a, yet yes, another sir. time. Yes, sir. Awesome. We've got a little something that you might find amusing. You know, we talked about Chuck having a Peloton but not using it. <laughs> In the studio, early on when, when Chuckster began at, at uh, the NBA on TNT, we tried to get him back in shape uh, as he was trying to lose weight to get back to his, his playing weight. And we unveiled at that point the Chuck Cycle 5000. Oh, Lord. And, and we happened to have... <laughs> uh, the Chuck Cycle 5000 has been brought here into our tiny steam room studio. And I'll let you take a look at this thing because it has got everything you could possibly want. Wow. In an exercise <laughs> machine. The Chuck Cycle oh, 5000. Yeah. And look at the, the dangling Twinkie the in Twinkie? front. That's, that's the goal that he's going for. Uh. <laughs> Who who came up with this contraction? Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 that's a great way to explain it. It's a contraption uh, loaded with Twinkies. But it's loaded with Twinkies, and Chuck actually rode that thing. I did ride what, that thing. Does it does, does it still work? Uh, Come on, Chuck. Does oh, it still we, work? Oh, we, yeah, hey, go Chuck, ahead. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Chuck, all those Twinkies are expired. I'm gonna let you know right now. All hey, 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 expired. Alex. Say, nothing can kill a Twinkie. Let's get that out the way. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Oh, he's moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, Chuck, if that thing if that thing can hold you down right there, you have no excuse to get on your Peloton. I'm telling you right now. You're absolutely <laughs> right. You are absolutely right. So, hey, I just hope these ain't the same Twinkies from like ten years I, ago. I have a feeling they are. <laughs> I bet uh, they are. <laughs> Alex, man, it's been great talking to you, I, I, and I know you're a busy guy. I appreciate you uh, taking some time. Uh, look, oh, my you, my 200th ride is Saturday afternoon at 1.30 live with you uh, because, look, when, I, when I'm when i working on there and I'm looking at my numbers and I'm saying, okay, well, I got two rides to 200 
and but I have to work it out so that my daughter Maggie and my son Eric can be on theirs at the same time and take the, the same live love class. That. I so, love that. So me, Poppy Thirty Two. I'm 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 amid, among the thousands who will be on that bike one thirty Saturday afternoon. Poppy Thirty Two along with Eric and Maggie on that thir- I think a 30 minute club banger so I want to make sure I get you that this gets you some love on the leaderboard uh that day Ernie yes and you know I normally don't take requests I know I'm gonna ask you right now is there anything you want to hear in that class you're the only one I'm gonna take a request for uh no no I don't, I don't even need to make any because all of your playlists are are on point man so you you just go ahead and you do your thing hey, and I, I, and listen I'm gonna say number one I'm proud of you man keep doing your thing keep inspiring people Thank you, bro. and one thing we need especially in the black communities is better health care take better care of our mm-hmm. bodies and I promise you this I, I'm down about 45 now I'm gonna start getting real serious I'm gonna join I'm, I'm gonna be with you real soon I promise you I'm gonna hold you to that Chuck yes I'm gonna hold you to that hey here's my request I do have a request and this will be this will be a great song, for for that class. Uh, P. J. Morton, P. J. Morton, who's yeah. the who's the keyboardist for Maroon Five, but a great solo artist. P. J. Morton, sticking to my guns. P. J. Morton, sticking to my guns. He's a hey, great. He's a hey, great. Hey, man, listen to that. It's it's perfect for the class. All right. Yes, sir. I got you, my brother. I got you. Say less. I got you. I appreciate you for doing this. I appreciate you for what you do every day for so many people around the world. And. Uh, and you have a great story. Keep sharing that story. Keep inspiring folks, man. We appreciate you. Thank you, fellas, for the opportunity to sit here and connect with you guys. Much love. All right. Much love. That's awesome. A great I'll way to start. See, I'll, see, I'll see you Saturday afternoon at 1.30, man. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a great way to start out 2022. It is, for sure. That's tremendous.